Revelation chapter 3. How to be a Philadelphian Christian in the Laodicean church period. I do believe that the seven churches there in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 are relating to actual seven you know, groups of Christians there called churches in the first century. Um, but I think that there's also some really good instruction in righteousness here. But I'm going to show you something interesting, just kind of a little bit of exhortation for you out there if you're a, a King James Bible-believing Christian. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. You know what? This is a little bit of an encouragement here. I know some of you have rebuked me on this, you know, in love, and I need a lesson more. Um, because I get into this whole thing, and they're going to shut us down. The Jesuits, the Vatican, the Google goons, the Department of Defense, or whoever else is in, sitting behind the computer, you know, the whole Google thing there. Um, NSA, whatever else. I say, well, they're going to shut us down. The time's going to come, they're going to shut us down. And you say, not if the Lord's not in it. Some of you have rebuked me on that. And you've said, Brother Brian, do you trust God or don't you? <laughs> Wham! Kick me a good time there, you know. And uh, I take the kick. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hmm. Our text says here, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. You know what YouTube is? It's an open door into your world. Wherever you're sitting right now, you're listening on your, you know, driving in your car or whatever else, wherever you're at, on lunch break or whatever, slacking off at work, whatever you're doing, you know, this is an open door. First time ever in church history that you've been able to get King James Bible believing preaching, you know, or preaching from a Bible believer, I'll say it that way, because the King James goes back to the, you know, early 1600s, I realize that, but there were other similar Bibles that were existing a long time before that. But the whole point is, this is a rare opportunity. And it's a rare opportunity for somebody like me as a preacher. I mean, I have correspondence from people all around the world. You know, I talk to people on Skype from other countries. You know, it's incredible. Why? What's going on there? God set an open door before us. And the Bible says here that no man can shut it. And again, I've talked about this in a couple other videos now. You know, there's this whole new policy. Oh, YouTube, they're going to start cracking down. They're going to start censoring. Um, well, only if God lets them. They can't shut the door until God says, okay, it's rapture time. You know, it's time for the body of Christ to, you know, leave and, and whatever. I mean, whatever he decides to do. I mean, some things I think of will be online for the saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how the whole thing's going to go down. But the whole point is, I'm going to be here on this channel on YouTube until the Lord, until the Lord says, okay, now you're done. What's one of the reasons for that? Verse 8, for thou hast a little strength. I don't have very many subscribers compared to a lot of people. There aren't that many of us. I mean, this channel is one of the biggest Bible-believing channels on YouTube, and I thank the Lord for putting me in this position. It's humbling and everything. Um, it's a lot of work to be here. Uh, but there's a lot of you that have some really good Bible-believing videos that have come out that I learned from. A lot of you out there. But you barely have any subscribers. Why? Because the, for thou hast a little strength, small in number, narrows the way which leadeth unto life. Few there be that find it. Hmm. And hast kept my word. Do you keep this book? Or do you look at it and say, well, it's a good translation, but do you believe that this is God's book? You say, yeah, I do, brother. I do believe it's God's book. Do you keep it? So what, what do you mean? Do you live by it? 
or is it just kind of like, well, it's God's book, but there's parts I just, uh, oh, I don't know, I, uh, I just, I, I, I'm not ready for that yet. It's a challenge. And has not denied my name. It's real stylish to use other names for Jesus. You know, call him all kinds of you know Hebrew names or whatever else and things. I'm not going to deny, deny the name of Jesus. Why? Because he saved me. I owe him. I mean, it's a it's a peculiar thing for somebody to come and save you, save your worthless hide. The Lord Jesus Christ saves you, and then you're afraid to say his name. You want to change it, update it. Kind of weird, isn't it? Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. You know the Jews are connected to a piece of real estate, to certain land, and God said that he would bring them back to that land. And all these wicked Satanists out there, synagogue of Satan members, be they white, black, or whatever other color they are, They'll attack the Jews over there in that land. They'll call them Zionists and they're all these oh, terrible things that they'll say about those people over there. Well, then you deny the word of God. Oh, well, we're the true Jews. Then you're the synagogue of Satan. Simple. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hmm. You know, uh, it's kind of an odd thing, but there are Christians that have really suffered in the past. And yet, when you look at what we go through as Bible-believing Christians today, uh, we have our own levels of suffering, don't get me wrong. But uh, when's the last time you heard of a King James Bible-believing preacher being burned at the stake? or any of the other numerous tortures that Catholicism has done to Christians down through the centuries. When's the last time you heard of that? Not very often. If it's happening, it's not happening very much. Why? Well, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I, will, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. And you can even make that the time of Jacob's trouble, obviously. That's, that's there too. But uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. I believe... The more you keep this book, the safer you will be. That's why my uh, mission statement, so to speak, is to charge the enemy with everything I have. Because I realize the Lord has given me some really controversial information that would have gotten people killed way back when. But I just think to myself, I'm just going to bring it out. What's the worst that can happen? You know? And God has protected us. I mean, we get the spiritual attacks. Yeah, sure. But we've never been shot at. Never had a bomb rigged in our vehicle or something like that. Or people trying to burn the house down here or whatever else. Trying to kidnap my son or what? It, it's never happened. Why? Because I believe in being hardcore. I don't believe in holding back. Why? Because I'm afraid to see what would happen if I did hold back. That's why I do it. Verse 12, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Hmm. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. That's pretty good. Good promise. But there's an even better one. And here's the interesting thing. You can be a Philadelphian type of a Christian and yet live in the most wicked time, the Laodicean church period. It's not that, well, Philadelphia came and gone, it came and gone, and, you know, the old time fundamental, you know, from the, you know, I mean, there's different arguments when the Philadelphian church period happened, if you want to use that as an argument. You know, some people say, well, it was, uh, you know, we'll say 1700 up until 1900 or something like this or whatever. But uh, my belief is that you can use that 
those arguments, but I take it also as seven different types of Christians, the seven churches. And instruction in righteousness, again, I'm not teaching this as this is Bible doctrine, this is the way it has to be. You know, look at it as instruction in righteousness here. Um, a challenge, in other words, for your life. You can be this kind of a Christian in this kind of an atmosphere over here. Philadelphian Christian in a Laodicean atmosphere. Laodicean time period. Let's look at the Laodiceans. Verse 14, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. You know the Lord would rather have you just be totally dead spiritually, just not even reading your Bible, just messing around with the flesh and whatever else, than to have you be one of these lukewarm Christians? Yeah. Lukewarm people make God sick. Well, you know, I, I guess some things are okay. And I, I, I don't want to judge somebody for blah, blah, blah. Cold or hot, brethren? Which side are you on? Verse 15. Excuse me, verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And I think that that's what's going to happen to a lot of these religious people. Again, you know, doctrinally speaking, I think that a lot of these will not think. I know for a fact a lot of these professing Christians of today, they think that they're in the body of Christ, but they're just far and matter down here in the stomach. And at the catching away, the rapture, it's going to be bleh, down on the earth. They made God sick. Never truly came to him as a repentant, broken uh, sinners in need of a savior. Verse 17. And here's how you can spot him. Because thou sayest, I am monetized and increased with good. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it says I'm rich. I mean, what's the point of monetization if you're not trying to get rich? You get those subscribers up there and you start going, oh, you know, oh, get more views. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. I talk more about these in my Revelation chapter 3 study, you know, the expository for Bible-believing Christians. But, you know, again, <laughs> compare this. I mean, this is what's going on with a lot of these modern professing Christians. I hope that they repent. I hope that they realize that Laodicean state makes God sick. I mean, how do you feel when you go into one of these modern Christian bookstores? You know how I feel? I know how you feel if you're a Bible believer because it's the same way you know, I'm feeling. You feel sick, don't you? I mean, you literally feel sick in your stomach. You look in there and you're walking along, it's like Benny Hinn's Secret of Prosperity, and you, uh, you know, Joel Osteen, Your Best Life Now, or The God in You, or what, all this stuff. You know, and you look over and there's some, these guys, uh, you know, tattooed from head to foot, and the Christian rock singers and stuff like this, and you're, and you're just like, oh, oh, oh. And there's Veggie Tales, you know, you know, Retarded Bible for Children, or something like this, and you go, oh, brother, you know, and you, Oh, you know, I mean, effeminate men with the little, you know, silky suit and tie on and stuff, you know, how you can be a better you or something. And you're just going, ugh. You know why you feel sick? Because that's the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord in you. You feel just like He does. You know, and you, and you watch some video by one of these modern preachers and stuff, and it's like he makes some good points, and it's like, Let's read out of the NIV, and you're going to, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> or let's 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 finish up here with this modern CCM song or something, or let's, you know, whatever. And they just like totally let you down, and you're going, you're feeling what God feels. But you know what? Even those people, even the worst of the worst of these modern professing Christians, can get to the point where they realize, I'm not saved. I better get saved. That's my story. I was a professing Christian for 25 years. I wasn't saved. <laughs> I had nothing in common with the people in this book here. Didn't even understand the King James Bible. NIV user. 15 years. You know? 
But uh, I got to the point where I realized, you know what? Um, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. I need the righteousness of God. And that's going to come from me being kicked around and persecuted because I believe this book. That's what it's talking about there. White raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Again, that righteousness there. You know, I need to be like God there in, in verse 8. 18, love what he loves, hate what he hates. But then that righteousness that comes as a result of that, that you're not naked and, you know, clothed in your own filthy works and things like that. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. You know, it's funny because I did a study on the thing of the blind man that came to Jesus and, and he says, you know, about how he was blind, you know, and things and now I see basically, and just like the old hymn, too, you know. Do you have that testimony? Before your salvation and after your salvation? Before your salvation, you're following all kinds of things, the course of the world, the lust of the flesh, you know, all this stuff, and you get saved and you just go, it's like you're looking at a different world. And all of a sudden, the stuff that you used to be like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Now you're looking and you're going, that is so stupid. What in the world? How did I ever even like that? You know, I mean, I used to want to go to that place. That, why? I wouldn't step foot in that thing now. And I used to like those movies. Man, I hate them now. What happened? You can see now. Yeah. So when I rip on these modern Christians and stuff like that, it's not because I hate them and whatever else. I hate what they're part of, and I pray that they get out of it before it's too late. But let's continue. Verse 20. This is where you come in at, okay? Get yourself cleaned up there. Actually, verse 19. Get yourself cleaned up there in verse 18, if you're a modern Christian. Verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. We're going to be talking about the word chastening in the future. <clears throat> I have a request for a study on the word chastening and on chastening in life of Christian and things like that. I'm going to be doing a study on that. It's a very interesting study, but... Check that out. As many as I love, God loves you. Really? Is he rebuking and chastening you? Hmm. Oh, my, no. He just gives me a wonderful day every day, and I'm never depressed, and I'm never down, and I get along with everybody. <laughs> then God doesn't love you. How do you know? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Well, that's just your interpretation, and you're free to your interpretation. It's not my interpretation. It's plain English. The Lord's saying, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. The zealous Christian life. You know, you get saved, and all of a sudden you're going... I'm burning them movies. I'm throwing that book out. I'm not going to wear those clothes anymore. I don't need this thing and I don't need that thing. I'm not going to watch that. That's not a funny joke. Don't talk that way around me. Hey, I don't appreciate you using God's name in vain. And all of a sudden, everything's changing. People are going, what's with him? Boy, he sure has gotten zealous. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I'm repenting. Your life of repentance starts at salvation. You don't repent and then later on get saved. No, <laughs> that's not how that works. I'm meaning you clean up all your life and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. Again, you know, watch the other videos. I've done plenty of studies on repentance. But it, let's continue. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Hmm. So you can be a Bible-believing Christian that has a little strength, has kept his word, not denied his name. Over here, Philadelphian Christian, you can be that in this time period when most people are up here. Lukewarm. Rich, increased with goods, all the other stuff. Yeah. And you can have greater fellowship right now with the Lord than a lot of people could have in the past. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's a wonderful thing when He opens your eyes and you see how much is really, really, really wicked. I mean, 
you know, things have always been bad on the earth. I mean, the, the, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Talking about the devil. He's been given dominion over this world right now. So yeah, things have always been bad. But not like this. Not like this time period. Things are worse right now than they've ever been. I would say, you know, maybe the only other time would have been pre-flood world. But I think we're pretty much there. As bad as it was back then. But in the midst of this time, you can have uh, tremendous fellowship with the Lord. It's really neat, actually. And uh, what's the reward that you get? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. How can you overcome if you're not a Philadelphian-type Christian? Bible believers are the only ones that are going to overcome this wicked world that we're currently in. You hold this book in the proper place that it's supposed to be in, proper place of authority, you're going to make it. You'll overcome. But you mess around with the world. Again, you know, I've seen people that I believe are Bible-believing saved Christians, and they get messed up. You know why? They start to put the book down, start to mess around. They get tired of the fight after a while. They don't uh, overcome. You need to be zealous and repent. You will find out that there are things that you're doing right now. As your life goes on as a Christian, the Lord's going to rebuke you for it and chasten you for it. He might not be right now because you're not quite there yet. But He'll bring things into your life and show you things and all of a sudden you go, I didn't know that that... Lord, I've been doing this this way for years. I, I didn't know. And He's going to say, okay, be zealous therefore and repent. Don't make me chasten you. <laughs> You'll get that little bit of a chase in there. To, you know, quit that thing. Be zealous. Repent. It's for your good. God's never going to take anything good away from you. Just a little bit of a challenge, brethren. Stand by the Word of God. Stand by the King James Bible. Uh, don't stand by me. I mean, you know, uh, understand what I'm saying. I'm not your final authority. I appreciate people praying for me and, and things like that. And, you know, and... and uh, um, you know, all that stuff, honoring those that labor in the Word and stuff. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just simply saying, uh, don't watch me with this thing of, of I'm a celebrity or something like that. I've never been into that. It's always about the book, brethren. Keep the Word of God in the position it needs to be in in your life. Um, God will do amazing things through this book. So that's going to be it. Just a little uh, short time of exhorting because I know it's getting really rough out there um, we're in the home stretch not much time left so that is going to be it thank you very much for watching